Well, hello, Celebration family. Once again, we gather together around God's Word. Well, as you know, we are talking about being repurposed this month, and uh, it's so important for us to understand that when you're being repurposed, it's part of a process from changing from where you were to what your new experience is going to be. And that means we need to be able to redirect our passion in order to prevail beyond these times. And as we are applying the principles of God's word in our life, we will see God mold us and shape us into this new form or way of life. And uh, that is what being repurposed is, is really all about. And God uses the various situations and circumstances of our life in order to bring about the necessary transitions that need to be brought about in order for us to experience the change. Those experiences uh, that I'll call situational, transitional experiences are designed to help move us in the right direction, to motivate us to be able to recognize our strengths, our weaknesses, our, and our need to be transformed and to change. And we see this lived out uh, in various places throughout Scripture. And today, uh, I have with me our children's director, uh, Jorge Maldonado, oh, who will be joining us. Uh, and welcome, Jorge. Thank uh, it's you. Good to Thank see you, you as Thank usual. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having me, rather. <laughs> Hello, Celebration family. Hallelujah. Well, um, we're going to be talking a little bit today about Acts chapter 15. Uh, verses 36 to 41 and verse 36 says after some days Paul said to Barnabas let us return and visit the brethren in every city in which we proclaim the word of the Lord and see how they are and so here he is wanting to uh, take Barnabas and travel along his previous missionary route to see how things are going right just to make sure things are progressing in the right way. Right. And uh, that's always good to be able to check in on people and to make sure that they're able to uh, experience growth and maturity in their life and that they're prospering in their way. Um, and that's that's an important thing to do in our lives, isn't it? <laughs> kind of like a telehealth, yeah. what we do well, now. Well, right? now we do that, yes, exactly. But yeah, a checkup. Right, a checkup. absolutely. Right. And so um, in this process, uh, Barnabas comes along in verse 37 uh, with the idea that he wants to take John called Mark along with them also. And um, as you know, you know, John Mark uh, is the one who uh, went on the first missionary journey with, uh, with Paul. And as they started out, he started out well because it was his own uh, regional area and territory, his own hometown, and he knew the various people and, well, certainly many of them. So it was easier for him to do the work of the ministry there. But as they moved on along the route that Paul was taking, he became more and more fearful as he went along. And certainly the idea is that many theologians have is that uh, the challenges of the work of the ministry uh, began to overwhelm John Mark and he began to become uh, um, stressed with the whole process. Fear arose in him. He became uh, frightful and of, of what might happen to him along the way because it, it was dangerous in uh, many cases. And so as he was going, he finally was overwhelmed with this fear that to such an extent that he he left. He literally just deserted Paul out there. And, you know, Paul was not happy with that. He was really upset. And that I could see bothering somebody. I can tell you, I've had experiences like that where you're counting on someone, you're, you're expecting them to go the distance with you, and then all of a sudden they bail. Man, that is just the worst thing. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, this reminds me, even myself, this being one of Paul's first or second missionary trips. Second, yeah. You know, for me, I remember my one of my first missionary trips uh -huh. that I actually went on, and it kind of reminds me, hey, I, I, I dedicated my time and my efforts to get there. But when I got there, there was a moment where I said, wow, I don't know if I could go through with this, right. you know, because right. you're on a missions trip. And sometime in your life, 
you feel like you want to flee and abandon right. your post and what you're called to do. Right. You know, even in ministry, in local ministry, you know, you get into ministry, you get into trying to live out the Christian life and doing what God has called you to do. And, you know, you can come to a point where you're, it gets overwhelming and you start to feel like, you know what, I, I can't do it anymore. I'm tired. But that's where the Holy Spirit is supposed Amen. to kick in. Amen. And as we grow and mature in our walk with God and in our relationship with God, that is what enables us to learn how to draw strength from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit begins to quicken us. He enables us as we apply the principles of God uh, in our life. God strengthens us in this process. Verse 38 says, Paul kept insisting that they should not take him along who had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. And, you know, it's hard to work um, with people who are afraid or intimidated or who have some sort of issue where they can't be relied upon. And there's so many people that are really not reliable. I mean, there's a lot of people who will talk up a good game. They will say everything that, you know, you would want to hear, give you the impression that they have what it takes. But then when it comes to actually following through to accomplish the work, then that's when things are challenged and difficult. You know, Satan is opposing us right. in this work. There is a demonic strategy that's working against anyone who says, here I am, Lord, send me, right. and who decides to rise up to accomplish right. and do the work of God, Satan is going to come against you. It's guaranteed. Absolutely. You know, you become a target for the enemy Absolutely. to try to hinder you. And what he uses against you are your own weaknesses. Right. He uses your own uh, shortcomings, and those little things begin to become bigger things as Satan begins to inflate them in your own mind and in your experience. And so the situations and the circumstances that you face as you do the work of God are going to bring these things out, but God is going to use those things right. to help you to grow and mature in your walk with God. Because once you begin to see, you will begin to learn from them and grow. And hopefully, and I've seen many people do this, when things don't go the way they would like them to go or they don't feel quite good about it or right about what they're doing, all of a sudden they want to quit. They want to throw in the towel or they want to point the finger and they want to try to find blame with something outside of themselves. But, you know, that's not the way we ought to live and not the way we ought to function as the people of God. No, absolutely. You know, this also reminds me, you know, a clear distinction between being restored which is bringing it back to its original state. In this case, we're talking about being repurposed. Right. You know, with obviously going from one state to a different state. Correct. You know, and through that, there is, you're going to fight the fear that first comes upon one's person. Right. Your own um, insecurities. But during those repurposed times is when we're being uh, transformed right, right? That's we're right. being chiseled out right. and so to right. speak so that we would have to overcome to get to our point where God is calling us to do exactly and the only way to experience this this uh, repurposing of God or to see it be, become manifested in your life is to go through these right. transitional experiences uh, that are impacting us and causing us to face ourselves and rethink not what the situation is, but why do I feel the way I do? Why am I responding the way I'm responding? Is this a godly response or a Christ-like manner? That's really what I think Paul really needed to address within himself in this situation. And, um, and eventually he did. Right. You know, we all know down the road, um, ultimately they ended up reconciling right. Right. and he saw the benefits of working with him. Right. And um, so uh, we know that Paul learned this very lesson as he went through the process of ministry transitions himself right. uh, and he was able to observe and watch and all of us go through this and hopefully we will learn in verse 39 it says and there occurred such a sharp disagreement that they separated from one another and Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus but Paul verse 40 chose Silas and left being committed to the brethren to the grace of the Lord and so here now we see how Paul and Silas split up into right. two teams. Right. 
So even though there was some immaturity going yes, on here, yes. and certainly some uh, offense, and that's a whole other thing, a spirit of offense right. that comes over people, that now God uses this to impact the, the greater <laughs> good of everyone. So now instead of one team of people going, he's got two teams uh, going out. And instead of John Mark being uh, the helper or kind of like uh, the guy who is like the gopher for the two of the, the official evangelists right, that were going right, out, right. now he's actually being mentored because he's with Barnabas and now he's getting that one-on-one -on -one interaction. Absolutely. That is so awesome because that's how God works things out. Right. We never to our own purpose or to the way we think they're going to work out. But in this right. particular case, they split up, they cover more area right. to be able to cover more uh, evangelism. Right. And Mark gets the one-on-one -on -one training right. with Paul, or right. excuse me, with Barnabas. Right, exactly. And so, you know, so often we go through these things and we feel like, you know, it's going to be a big mess, a boondoggle, if you will. But God ends up using it for good. Amen. And and, uh, and ultimately, it ends up better for the person who would have been offended. You know, uh, John Mark could have been offended at, you know, Paul saying, no, I'm not taking him. And um, and it's kind of offensive. And Barnabas, he's like, that's my cousin. You can't talk to him and talk about him that way. But nonetheless, uh, you know, God says, don't worry, guys, I've got it. We'll make two teams. And the two of you can each take someone of your choice and we can be that much more effective. Amen. And God has a way of working out all things for the good when you're called according to his purpose. And in the end, it says in verse 41, and he was traveling through Syria and Sicilia, strengthening the churches. Amen. And this is what the it's really goal. all about. The ultimate goal. The ultimate goal, that we would all be strengthened. Right, right. And so as we go through these uh, situational transitions, we can see the power of God working in each and every one of our lives. God using our strengths and our weaknesses, our situations and circumstances to be able to accomplish His will and His purposes. Not our will, but His will be done. And so God is able, He is awesome, He is amazing, and I pray that despite what challenges you face, no matter what the difficulties are that come your way, that you would be able to stand, you would be able to rise up and persevere, not allowing yourself to be hindered from accomplishing what it is that God is trying to do in your life, that you would overcome every strategy of the enemy and every foul thing that would try to prevent you from sharing the gospel, bringing the message of the kingdom of God to those who are in this world and even following up on those whom God has already allowed the seed of Christ to take root in their lives, that you would be able to bring forth life even in them. In Jesus' name, through transitional, transitional purposes of God, situational transitions, and the repurposing of God in our lives. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah.